I want you to meet Tristan. Tristan has been my partner in crime for over six years, and I cannot imagine my life without him. But at just 11 months old, Tristan's life changed forever. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but Tristan's body works a little bit differently to yours and mine. Tristan relies on multiple daily injections to keep himself alive, self-administering a drug that if he gets the dose wrong by just a few grams, it could be lethal. This on the left is his standard dose of the drug and the dose on the right could kill him in just a few hours. As if this pressure to keep his body operating at a healthy level isn't overwhelming enough, he's now at a much higher risk of some pretty serious long-term complications. Things like heart disease, kidney failure, nerve damage, and one day he may even lose his sight. What Tristan is living with is lifelong and there is no cure. Because at just 11 months old, Tristan was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. But he doesn't look like someone who has diabetes, does he? He defies almost every stereotype. He's young, he's fit, he's healthy, he eats a very balanced diet and he exercises almost every day. And that's because the stereotypes that we have in our head about diabetes are founded on incorrect assumptions and misunderstanding. And that can be really dangerous. Just like how this standard dose and lethal dose of this drug called insulin are different by just a few grams, if we can change the way that we think and the way that we talk about diabetes just a little bit, we can not only change Tristan's life, but the lives of 1.2 million Australians who are also living with diabetes. And it's simple to change these assumptions that we have in our head. I'm not gonna ask you to carb count or to check your blood levels. I'm not even gonna ask you to join a rally to fund more medical research. No, what I'm asking you to do is far more influential. And that is to think before you speak. We know that our words have power. We're living in an age where we're careful and sensitive to make sure that the words that we use don't offend or upset other people. We don't use racial slang and we don't use gender-based terminology. But this critical thinking hasn't quite reached the way that we talk about diabetes and other chronic health conditions, at least not yet. When I tell people about Tristan's story, I usually get the same kind of response. It's always something like, oh, I'm gonna get diabetes one day, I'm so lazy. Or, oh, does he have the bad kind of diabetes? And the most common response is something like, ah, you should have told him to stay away from those donuts. While these comments might seem harmless, when you hear them all the time, they start to weigh you down. In fact, a study in Switzerland showed that patients with diabetes who experience higher levels of this stigma, that is, these negative comments, being treated differently or being judged, they had lower self-esteem, higher levels of psychological distress and more pronounced symptoms of depression. To put it simply, the weight of living with this condition, coupled with the perceived pressure of society, negatively impacted their lives severely. This is why we need to change the way that we talk about diabetes. Diabetes Australia reported just last year that diabetes more than doubles your risk of developing depression. And 50% of people with diabetes are thought to also have a mental illness. 
the more we treat diabetes like a punchline, the more isolated people with diabetes are made to feel. And someone with depression can find it mighty hard to maintain their daily diabetes care. And that can result in immediate medical emergencies and at risk of those longer term complications. Someone with diabetes already has to make an extra 180 decisions every single day. Can you imagine having to make an extra 180 decisions when you're already weighed down by mental fatigue, anxiety or depression? So now you see the way that you and I talk about diabetes and think about diabetes has a massive impact on the people who are living with this condition. And you and I can change and support these people to make sure they live happy and healthy lives. But how should we talk about diabetes? This is a question I've asked myself many times, but instead of just Googling it, I went out to some of Australia's largest online communities of people living with diabetes, and I asked them, what do you wish people would stop saying when you told them that you had diabetes? Now I'm gonna share this list with you of the top five things that you shouldn't say to someone who has diabetes. Number one, I didn't know you're diabetic. Using the term diabetic implies that someone is defined by their condition, when of course we know this is not the case. Their mothers, fathers, friends, boyfriends, and the list goes on. Number two, do you have diabetes because you ate too much sugar? Now, uh, most people living with diabetes would be more than happy to explain to you how they came to have their condition. There's a big misconception out there that sugar has something to do with it. And I can confirm for you that it absolutely does not. Now, diabetes is more complicated than a sugar rush. And I can assure you, no one has gotten diabetes just because they ate too much sugar. While someone with diabetes does have to monitor their carbohydrate intake so that they can correctly dose their medication, this has to do with all kinds of foods, not just the sugary ones. Number three, you don't look like you have diabetes. As I've already shown you, diabetes doesn't have a look. Our eyes often don't tell the full story and anyone can have diabetes no matter what they look like. Your blood sugar is high. Did you do something wrong? Blood sugar levels are numbers that are monitored to correctly dose medication. And that's all they are, numbers. They're not indications of failure or success. In fact, sometimes they're out of a person's control. Instead of asking if they did something wrong, offer support instead. And finally, are you sure you should be eating that? People who have diabetes have probably had the condition for a really long time, and they're really aware of how food affects their body. Now, I don't have diabetes, but I do believe that it is my responsibility and all of our responsibilities to take conditions like diabetes seriously, to ensure that we're not adding more weight to the shoulders of people living with the condition. So be kind to your family, your friends, your co-workers, your acquaintances, strangers who are living with diabetes. It's something that nobody has asked for and everybody is doing the best that they can. We can use our words to make somebody's life harder or easier. And it's up to us to decide how we are going to use our words to make an impact.